Okay, welcome to the computer programming review lecture. Today, what we're going to look at, we're going to look at two. Um, so last week, what we did is we did the um, the test review. Okay. So this week, we're going to unfortunately we're, we're going to go on. Otherwise, it's going to be too cramped to jam in about five lectures in one series. So what I'm going to do is I'm rather going to continue with the stuff that you guys did um, last week, which would be um, finishing off the pointers using the malloc and then looking at a, an example, the cards, and then also starting to look at file handling. I think that stuff's important. Also with the view of getting your, um, you started with the project. So, so let's go to, um, let's kick off with, uh, with last week's lecture 24. Just Okay, so what you did last week, that was 26th, 27th of September. You looked at structures. This was now chapter 10, and you guys were going to round, start running off uh, the, the structures. And this is, we're going to look at arrays of structs, the function of malloc, and also how that's used within structures. And then a bit of an example, a card shuffling and a dealing simulation program. That, that uses these concepts. Okay, so um, let's look. The best way to to look at this part is to look at an example. So this is a this is a, a, just a standard C file. The, the beginning we have hash includes standard io.h, and then we have this part over here, which where we type diff a struct. That inside that struct there's a character array called name. There's an int atomic number and a double atomic mass. And this type def, this struct, essentially defines an element in the periodic, periodic table. Okay? So what, what this is, is a user-defined type that internal to it can contain a few fields. Okay, so in the fields in this structure is the name, the atomic number, and the atomic mass, and the type of this user-defined variable, almost variable type, is an element. So I can use this when I declare variables. So for example, I can declare an array, periodic table of elements, that is 118 big, and each one of the elements in that array is of type element. So each one, each element, essentially has a name, an atomic number, and atomic mass. And I can also um, define a pointer to an element, for example. So what we want to do now is let's look at how we're going to assign, for example, to one of the elements in this array. So periodic table of elements, array number zero, element number zero. Remember, array indexing in C starts at zero. Okay, so I want to access array element number zero. And then if I want to get to its name, I use a dot and then the variable name called name equals, and I assign it something. Here I assign it hydrogen. And I can also assign the atomic number something, and they're all related, associated with element number zero. Atomic mass is equal to that. Now, I can print them out over here, and over this is how I print them out. So I pass it this, um, but note how I pass this, this uh, variable that's inside my struct now to the printf statements. I do that using these, um, this, uh, this arrow notation over here. Um, so what we've done here is we've essentially just worked with the first element, element number zero. Obviously, if you want to work with element number one or two or so on, then you would change this indexing in the array accordingly. And this is the output that you guys can expect, okay? But now, benefit of C is, or actually the, a more realistic program, is that you don't always know how big, how many variables you're going to store in an array. And if you don't know how many variables to store, well then, what you're going to start doing is you, you have the benefit of adjusting the size of the arrays dynamically during program execution. 
And what you guys are going to use then to do that is this malak, malak, this routine over here, malak. That dynamically allocates. Here we have number of elements that we set as an integer to 118. And how big is each of these elements going to be? We do that using the size of um, function. The size of function specifies here that it's of size element. Okay, so element. So it'll, def it'll allocate, dynamically allocate 118 elements where each one is the size of this structure over here. Very important, when you use a malloc, then after that, that essentially reserves a certain amount of memory for your program when it executes in RAM. But it's your responsibility to free that memory as well so that it can be returned to the operating system. So what sometimes happens, if you, for example, have a for loop that loops a thousand times, and in each one of those iterations, you allocate a certain amount of memory. And that continues indefinitely, that continues and continues. Then the program size in RAM is just going to grow. It's going to grow and grow and grow and grow, and your program execution is going to eventually become very slow. So we don't want to misuse operating resources. So for every malloc, there should be also a free. And the function is pretty simple, it's called free, and all that you pass to it is a, this malloc returns a pointer, to that memory address that you guys are going to use. Free just takes that pointer and it returns it to the operating system. Okay, so this part, to really understand how allocation works and so on and pointers and things, it's always good to go through, a, through, a, through an example. For example, getting started with the pointers stuff of two weeks ago, I would recommend go through the memo of last week's tutorial, specifically the first part that where you allocate an array, you assign that to a pointer, you print out the, um, the pointer values and also the memory addresses and make sure that you guys understand that. All right, so in this one, we're gonna look, dive in a little bit more uh, in detail. We're going to design and implement an algorithm that shuffles and deals a deck, um, a, a deck consisting of 52 cards, like playing cards that you guys know. So, so this is an illustration of, a graphical illustration of what that looks like. So on the left hand side we have our suite, okay, our suit, whatever, that's the hearts, diamonds, clubs and spades. Then on the right, our face, Remember, our card can have anything from an ace, a deuce, a three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, a jack and a queen and a king. Okay, so in the middle, there's our array in memory. This is now each element, each one of those rows. So deck is our array that contains these cards, okay? So deck zero, that's our first card, our zeroth card. That, that has a particular suite and it has a particular face and so on. Deck one, suit and face, and so all the way up to deck 51. Why 51? Because I start at zero. Remember C indexing for arrays starts off at zero. Okay, so um, this is just a little bit more in detail. How are we going to fill it? So faces, we're going to fill from zero all the way up to 51, okay? and um, the suites we're going to assign starting with zero, so suite number zero would be hearts, then we go over to one, which would be diamonds, then, and so on. We iterate, so we, we just vary the cards between diamonds, hearts, and spades, and so on. But it'll, it'll become clear in the code now. In terms of the pseudocode, what are we doing over here? Essentially what we've got to do, if we start at the beginning, we're going to create a card structures, you can think now, if you look back at our, our planning, our overall planning of our program, we need something to keep track of, whether it's hearts, diamonds, clubs, and spades. Then we need something that keeps track of the faces. And these are constants. They don't change, okay? So that's something that I can note. And in the middle, I have an array that can host all of these cards, these card types. That'll, that'll have all of my individual cards 
in, okay? So I create an array of 52 cards, that's my deck. Initialize the constant array of suit names, that's my heart, diamond, um, spades, that type of stuff. Then the, I initialize a constant array of the face names. And those two are constants, why? Because they don't change, those cards are, that's the way that those cards are, okay? Then, I need to start off, I need to first get full my deck with cards, right? So for each card in the array, initialize the face in the suite, so assign it. So we say, okay, card item number zero is two of hearts, or something like that, right? Now we're gonna shuffle it. We want to randomize this. So how are we gonna do now? We're going to define a random number between zero and 51, and we're gonna swap the card at that random position with the current one. So we're just gonna swap out those two cards. And then how are we going to deal the cards? Well, we deal them, we're just going to print them out. Okay. So this is more or less what the program um, looks like, but maybe I, I think what would be better is if I go over to, co to software, let's see if I can see it over here. Yeah, there we go in the Eclipse environment, okay? So what I do is I define my, my standard IO, standard lib, and my standard libraries up there. Um, time is obviously needed for the randomization effect. Standard lib and standard IO, just you guys know that pretty well. Okay, over here, I need to define my structure. A card, remember the deck contains two properties. Firstly, we need to the card has a particular face. Is it an ace, a deuce, a three, four, five, whatever, king, jack, queen? Then it has a particular suit. Is it a diamond, spades? What, what is it? Okay, so that's the two properties that this card can have. And these are constant characters. Okay, we're going to see where those constant characters come into play. So then we need to type def the struct of this type card. Then we define our three prototypes, like I said. F firstly is we need to fill the deck, so we need to assign cards to each one of the 52 positions in the array. Those are our 52 cards. Then we're gonna shuffle this deck, and we're gonna deal it. So just to deal it, we just print it out in a nice format manner. So this is our main function. Firstly is we need to define an array that holds each, each of our cards. So this is what our deck 52 does. That's a car, a, a, an array consisting of card types. And remember, a card type is defined in this struct called card, and it has a face and it has a suite. All right, so what we do now is we need to initialize our pointers. We need to keep track of the faces and of the suites. suites. So this is what we have over here. Let me just put a space in. This is this part. So the faces can be only one of a few, and those few fixed ones is an ace, a deuce, three, a four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, jack, queen, king. The suits can be hearts, diamonds, clubs, and spades. And these, all of these I define as a constant char pointer. Okay, so because they cannot change. They are fixed with these values. Then I need to randomize the effect. Remember what this SRAN does is it randomizes. Every time the program starts, it'll begin with a new random sequence. Otherwise, it'll begin with a random sequence only the first time, thereafter constant. So we randomize it using the time, the system time, okay? So, what are we going to do? Firstly, we're going to assign each one of our cards. We're going to open our cards, and this is what this full deck routine does. So, full deck, let's look at that first. Full deck has a prototype, a function prototype. That's of type void. means it doesn't return anything, but it takes a couple of stuff. It takes uh, a card, a pointer to the deck, a card, point, a card, and then a pointer. Uh, pointer, constant, w deck, okay? And then we have a constant char pointer, 
W phase and a constant char pointer W sweet. Okay, so what is this telling us? This tells us the first one, this, this declaration of constant over here means that the, the, the values of that dec can change, but the values are limited to remain of type card. The constant char pointer face over here means that the values are of that pointer array is also fixed to these faces that you defined over here. And same with the suits, the suites. The, the constant char pointer means that these values for this array suit is fixed. Okay? So if we look at our full deck routine, essentially what that does is it just loops over the the cards. There's from zero, I have a for loop, zero up to and including 51 because there's 52 cards and I increment my pointer. And then I just access each one of my card decks using like this with the dot, remember the dot over here, the face, and I extract the face from the face array that I pass in here. And why do I mod by 13? Because I effectively have to start my sequence again. So 0 mod 13 is 0. So I select the 0th element from this face array, which is an ace. Then the first element, 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, and so on, to the point where I get to 14. Now 14 mod 15, or 13 mod 15, 13 is 0, then it'll start again at ace, and so on. So it deals, signs the cards, ace, deuce, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, jack, queen, king. Then it starts again, ace. So that's the way that it assigns it in the array. And same with the suit array. Over here. That is a, you can just do that using inter integer division over here. So these two lines are pretty nifty. Um, let's see if we can debug and figure out what that does a little bit more. So I'm going to first uncomment that a bit. I'm going to build my program. And I'm going to run my program. Let me just make this a bit smaller over here. Okay. And something that I do to make sure that you finish is always print out at the end of your program, print out something like finish so that you know you are ending the program. Okay. That looks good. Let's run it. Okay, finish. Right, so I want to see now, I want to print out now, what am I assigning to my array? Full deck. Okay, so full deck is, I want to print out, let's see if we can add a printf to this loop over here, printf, um, w deck percentage d dot face equals percentage s and sweet equals percentage s and we just printed each one on a new line and we are going to print out i my face would be this value that we've assigned there and the sweet would be this value that we've assigned here. Okay. Okay. See if we run it. Oh. Okay. Sorry, this is causing issues now. Type constant char, let's just build it. Ah, now Eclipse is going into this state over here. Okay. Okay, to avoid losing a lot of time now, I'm not going to try and debug this. I'm rather going to continue through the program. Um, 
But in any case, you guys can, can print this out and see when it makes sense or see what the output of it is following this, um, this, this modulus operand and also the integer division operand over here. Okay, so that's what the full deck does. Let's just uncomment this and see if I can get the program working again. Ah, now this thing is... Okay, just hang on. Sorry about that. Okay, that one we've got to end. Okay, okay that's fine. All right. Okay, so we know our program finishes. Let's shuffle the cards. So you pass it in, you pass the deck of cards. And essentially what that does is you just, you pass it the deck of cards that now has values, different suites and faces. Then you have a for loop that iterates through all the cards. It picks a random index using the rand operand over here. And that index will be between 0 and 51. Then it just swaps out the, um, the card at the jth position with that of the, at the ith position. That is very similar to, for example, bubbles, bubble sorting, how you do that. And as I said, dealing the deck of cards, the last thing that we do is we just loop from 0 to 51 and we print out the particular card using, um, using a nice format specifier. All right. And so we're going to print out what this does is it's going to print out, I think, four cards in a row. So let's see what that looks like. Okay, there we go. Okay, yeah, four cards in a row, and there we go. So that's our list of cards. Deuce of diamonds, six of spades, ace of hearts, jack of spades. So, and so it goes. Okay. Um, the program is in the slides. You can, I urge you to put that into, a so, into, the, into code, okay, into Eclipse, and run through it. And then also systematically step through the program and make sure that you understand why each of the routines are done as it is done. All right. Um, that was this program. So here we've looked at arrays of structures. So struct is a, is a user-defined type. How you can dynamically allocate memory for it using the malloc routine, the C routine malloc, but very important when you do that, you also need to remember to use the, the free routine because free returns the memory again to the operating system. We looked at how to shuffle and deal cards and also the impact of constants. Okay, so that was about it for, for this part. Do you guys have any questions on this lecture? Yes? Can I go on to the next lecture and then take questions at the end? Okay. All right. Okay, so the, the next lecture that you guys did was, um, was lecture 25, I think. And this was on file processing. So you guys are starting now with file processing. Okay, I'm, is this tomorrow? Oh, okay, all right. Okay, so I'm gonna leave that now. Let's rather look on, take a couple of questions, like you said. Introduce structs, okay? Let's look at that. Here we go, this one. This is lecture 23, the first where we, where you guys had the, um, first started looking at at struct, so let's have a look now at this. Okay, this was done 22 September. So, okay, so I did the, maybe working a little bit um, before and yeah. Okay, so this is what a struct looks like. It is a collection of related variables, but it doesn't have to be the same type of variable. 
This, for example, is an example where we have the, the same variable, but as I showed you in the previous lecture, you could also have different types, like for example, a constant, a double, a float, and so on. But the key to it is, is that it groups um, related things. So for example, here's a coordinate structure, and a coordinate, we just assume here it's in the x and the y plane, okay? The variables in this structure are called the members of that struct, and as I said, it can contain different data types. So it's commonly used to define records that we store in files. So that would be the new stuff that you guys are going to do a bit later on in the week. So, and if you combine this with pointers, these structs, like you guys saw in the card example that I did earlier, that makes it very powerful thing to do because we can, for if we want to assign um, one of the elements, like for example, the card in our array was one element, but it consists, it had two properties. It had a face and it had a suit, right? So that face and suit, that common, um, that common com um, properties, those common properties I can capture using a struct. Okay. Now, for example, if I had a grid of coordinates, I wanted to plot data pixels, each pixel could be represented by a coordinate. It has an X and a Y component. So that property I can save using struct. Very important, there's some standard syntax stuff that works and doesn't work. Um, for example, here, you need to remember the uh, semicolon, otherwise it won't work. So as I said, this, this struct type coordinate contains two variables, an X and a Y. Um, here's another example uh, where we have, for example, a student. A student can contain a, a character uh, array, that's his name or her name, a gender, that's also a char, male or female, M or F, and also a number, a student number, which is a long. So there's where we've grouped now different types of variables in one structure. Here's, for example, a node, which becomes how you link something into a dynamic memory allocated list, like a linked list. We we, we're going to look at that a bit later. We don't have to worry too much about that now. Um, oh, this battery is dying. I'm going to close it. I'm just going to talk loudly, okay?
access my member X using a documentation over here, or alternatively, is I can also use an arrow if I have a pointer to a struct. Okay? So I have a pointer, let's look at it. A C pointer is a pointer to a struct coordinate, and it contains the address of C. Same things you do with, with variables. If x was just an integer variable, you could do with you could define it in a structure. Okay, this is just a, a, how we're going to use structs in functions. So over here we have this is our program where our program starts. We have a struct called coordinate. It has a double x and y, as I said, it's the coordinate and y. Then we have these two functions. So for me to change something, right, I want to I want to change the member within a structure. I can pass it to a function, but I have to pass a pointer because I'm going to make use of call by reference, not by, not call by value. So in order to do that, I pass a constant struct coordinate pointer and a and a constant struct coordinate pointer b over here. So two pointers, and these are these are constant. So what that means that my A and B pointers that I pass in is not going to change, but the R pointer, this third one, that doesn't have a constant keyword, so that pointer can change. So I just say that the, the R pointer is equal to the A pointer plus the B pointer, and take note how I dereference them using uh, an arrow and not a dot. The reason is because A pointer this A pointer variable is a pointer to this type of struct coordinate. So this is just what the output is going to be. So over here, just print out point A, uh, or yeah, 
simplifying things a little bit more using a type diff approach. So what I can do now, I can create a synonym. That's an alias for a previously defined data type. So the reason that I want to use this type diff that you guys learned about is it because, because it can create shorter type names. So here's an example. I have option one. I have a struct coordinate like we did in the previous example. consists of members x, y. Structures. We also looked a little bit ahead at file handling. Do you guys have? Or do, yeah. No, we started with that. We're going to do that next week. We'll look at that part a little bit in more detail. Do you guys have any questions on structs or anything that doesn't make sense to you? done now is I've assigned the address of this variable C I've just assigned 
equal to this pointer, C pointer. And if I want to access its X component, I have to use the arrow because C pointer is a pointer to that struct type. Okay, but if it's not a pointer, like C is not a pointer, I just use the dot notation. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah. The malloc. Okay, let's look at malloc again. That's a good question. So, did, does this one contain a malloc? This lecture? I don't think so. I think it was in the other... I think it was in the other... Um, lecture. let me just go to the other slide. Okay. Okay, this is malloc over here. So, let me just make it a little bit so that we can read. Okay, so what we have over here, this line over here, is we say that periodic table of elements, that is a pointer to a type element, so as my struct is called element. I used a type diff to shorten it a little bit. And that contains members, name, atomic number, and atomic mass. But now I don't know how many variables I'm going to need. So the program, for example, we let's make, act as though we determined this number at a later stage. We read it from the user. So now we only determine that the number of elements was 118. So what malloc does is it takes, I'm going to allocate 118 elements of, I times it with size of, because I need to know how many memory spaces I need to reserve in memory, okay? So that's why I say the number, I want 118 and times size of, but what's the, the size of the variable that is going to be stored in each of these locations? And that is my element, and my element is a structure, a type, stru a type def struct here that contains these members, name, atomic number, and atomic mass. But then, very important, because I now, what malloc returns is a pointer to that memory address, the first element. It's almost like an array, okay? A dynamic array that can grow and shrink. Or that can grow, you can allocate memory for it dynamically during the program execution. So very important at the end, because you do that, you need to free memory again when you don't use it. So that's why this free function is very critical, okay? And that free function takes that pointer that you've gotten back um, from malloc. You pass it to that, and that'll give all the memory back to the operating system. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, if there's no other questions, um, I'll upload the video for you guys today to SunLearn. Please look through it again, and very important, this isn't a spectator sport. You guys will have to go through this example and program it, print out memory addresses, and print out the values using the dot and star notation, uh, and arrow notation for the structures.